Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, we are back again with our Spotlight Series project, and we have Bajorn with us. Is one amazing leader who has been pushing a lot of new changes to the industry and contributing to contributing a lot to application security space. So he has contributed and created a project, which is one amazing project called Juice Shop. But now I'm going to stop and let him talk more about him and the project. Over to you, John. Thank you, and thanks for having me here. Yeah, um, my name is John Kimmenich. Um, I'm the project lead for the OWASP Juice Shop project. I started this project like uh, eight years ago um, as a little pet, private pet project, and it soon after become uh, became an OWASP project. Actually, um, yeah. So it's a it's a vulnerable web application, which is quite nice to actually learn about security vulnerabilities in, in modern web applications and can also be used in all kinds of things like uh, training, university lectures, capture the flag events. Basically, you can do you can do whatever you like with, with the project there. So um, other than the juice shop, I'm also involved in the in the German OWASP chapter in the project committee. And uh, yeah, so I'm a I'm I'm quite active in, in OWASP, you could say. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. So uh, I also wanted to know how exactly I can download this uh, juice shop. And you mentioned you, we can actually train developers, testers, and even we can train people in the university. So how exactly we can download it or how we can um, start using this? Because this is very interesting that these things are uh, the live examples and people are going to use them. Uh, mm -hmm. live and can have uh, like it's sort of an on-job training experience right because they are understanding these things and they can just go go and join an organization because they have a bit of idea about it yeah so um let me let me just quickly share my screen then i will show you sure. how the easiest way to download it so if you if you just google OWAS juice shop you should as the first hit right get to the OWAS juice shop project page in, on the OWASP website. And this basically has links to every bit of information that you need to get the application installed. So over here on the right-hand side, you find the different installation options. And if I click here, for example, on the from source option, I'm being sent to the, uh, to the GitHub page or to the GitHub project of the juice shop. And here you find lots of options how to install it. So you can either install Node.js on your computer run it locally, which is what I'm doing right now behind the scenes already. Um, you can also download a zip file with a prepackaged application. So you still need Node.js on your computer then. You can also use a Docker container. We have some instructions to run it with a Vagrant or in an um, EC2 instance or in an Azure container, Google, whatever you like. Or for the simplest way to start with it, you can just use um, a Heroku instance which you can just install by clicking this button. If you're logged into Heroku, it will basically just send you to a single page where you pick a name for your URL and then it will install Juice Shop behind the scenes and uh, you can try it out over there. And we even have permission from Juice Shop, uh, from, from Heroku to let this vulnerable application be hosted on their platform, so, which, is, which is quite nice. So that's the easiest way to, to actually um, do it. Personally, I'm now running it um, locally installed here with, uh, with Node.js. And uh, when you start it, um, it actually checks if everything works out, right? So it will even tell you if something is wrong with your setup or the installation failed for some reason or whatever, or the port is in use, whatnot. And yeah, then you have a, a running instance. Very interesting. Now, uh, how exactly I can go ahead and get a, give a training or take a training on this? Yeah, so um, maybe maybe uh, let's start with a, just a brief look at how the how the application uh, works when you when you use it on your own, and then uh, I will I will basically uh, t explain a little bit more how you can how you can do a training with the help of the Juice Shop. So when you start the application and you visit it for the first time, it uh, gives you this this uh, main screen here with a little introduction text. If you're just interested in the hacking part, you could immediately jump here to this uh, little, um, little helper section, which will start one of our built-in tutorials, which will kind of help you get started because uh, the Juice Shop tracks um, all of its 100 vulnerabilities that have been exploited by you uh, on a scoreboard. And 
basically finding the scoreboard is the first actual challenge, right? So that's that's basically how it how it works. So I will I will skip this for now. So in general, Juice Shop is a is a fully working um, e-commerce application. So you can scroll through different uh, products here, take a look at some details if you're interested. You can even read some customer reviews and all that uh, usual stuff. Of course, you have to accept the cookie banner. Um, and then you could register a new user account. I will just for, uh, to be a bit quicker here, I will just log in with our demo account, which has already payment options and uh, delivery addresses set up. So it, everything is a little bit faster. So I can now just pick some products I'm interested in. Like for example, one of my personal favorites, temporary tattoos, and maybe uh, maybe a, a copy of the ebook. So let's go with these, going to the shopping basket, uh, checking that everything's right. So maybe I want a few more tattoos than just one pack. Going to checkout, selecting my address, continue. One day delivery because I really need these tattoos. And then I could directly go into the payment option. Um, I can also try to save some money by adding a coupon code. Unfortunately, I don't have one, but it tells me down here that I might find one on Twitter. So let's take a look at the Twitter account of the juice shop, which is, by the way, totally worth following, especially if you're interested in new releases, right? So what's coming next and what new features have been actually um, put out. So and here you can see we have actually um, a coupon posted for July, which is supposed to give me 30% discount. So let's try that out. Paste then redeem, and it tells me 30% will be applied. Really good. So I will pay with my credit card then, continue placing the order, and that's basically it, right? Now I can take a look at my order confirmation if I want. And it should even tell me, yeah, that worked. That it gave me this 30% discount here. Very nice. So, and this is of course not everything, right? So you can take a look at all kinds of things. You can do, give customer feedback. You can complain if something went wrong with the order. We even have a lovely um, bot that uh, you can use to ask some questions about prices. Of course, that bot is also a little bit problematic from a security point of view, like many, many other features in the juice shop. But if you only use it with a, without actually trying to break anything, it actually behaves like a normal e-commerce application, right? Down to uploading photos of your favorite product and all that stuff. So obviously the main point of the juice shop is the hacking. So I will now go to the scoreboard this will trigger a lovely confetti animation over here. That is now stuck a little bit. And it will give us a little notification at the top that I actually solved the hacking challenge, right? Because finding the scoreboard is basically the first challenge that you should try to solve. And here you can see now the full list of all the juice shop challenges, all the hacking exercises which, that are available. And this is in total 100 um, hacking challenges that we have right now, right? Ranging across tons of uh, categories from access control, cross-site scripting, injection, everything you really actually might want, right? So, and if you, just to maybe show one really simple example, so just showing how cross-site scripting attacks uh, work here, for example, um, there's a DOM XSS, vulnerability in the juice shop and it expects us to use this payload here. So, okay, let's see, I will copy that already to be prepared. If I would now, and I'm doing this in quick mode, if I would play around with the application a little bit and start searching for stuff, I will notice that it actually shows us the search term here, right? And if I would actually put in some HTML here, you can see that it's being rendered. So. Maybe this is vulnerable to cross-site scripting as well, which it is, as you can see. And now I get confetti again and a success notification. And on the scoreboard, I would now see that this challenge has also been solved. So that's the in, the, in a very quick uh, 
run down the the way how to use the Drew shop. And of course you can use it completely on your own. Um, and that's quite fun, but it can also be quite, uh, let's say a daunting task if you, especially if you get this full list of 100 uh, challenges right from the start. And this is why uh, there's different ways to use it and or how recommendations from, from, from us, uh, how to use it in trainings, for example, or in university lectures. So maybe let me jump really quickly to our official documentation where the link you can also find in the, um, on, the, on the project page, but it's also quite simple to remember. So this is actually a full blown ebook, which you can read online, but you, if you prefer to have it on your uh, ebook reader, or whatever, you can also download it from LeanPub for free, obviously. And there's one section in here in the appendix, which is the trainer's guide, which uh, basically explains how you, um, how we would recommend to host um, instances for students, what customizations of the juice shop we uh, recommend. Um, there's even a side project that is not um, part of OWASP, but is uh, easily closely related to the Drew shop, which allows you to host multiple instances very conveniently on a Kubernetes cluster. This is called multi-juicer. Also links you can find on the project page. And uh, this basically, or even links to uh, different trainings which have been published, which use the Drew shop in exercises for classrooms. And it even comes with a list of uh, hacking challenges, which are really nice for uh, live demonstrations, even with some information on how much time you should plan for those, right? So this DOM XSS that I just did, this is basically one of the most easy ones to, to do and show, right? But we also have a few which are really nice to show, but take a long time. For example, the coupon code that I just used, there's multiple ways how you can actually hack this. And, uh, but this is basically, yeah, you, you should probably have like 20 minutes just to explain and show this, uh, this, uh, this task here. So this is something we will not do here now, but it's really still very nice for training setup. There's a fancy cross-site scripting demo that uh, the Timo Pagel actually uh, created, also a uh, very active uh, uh, OWASP contributor where you can uh, show very nicely how cross-site scripting can be really dangerous. Um, with installing a JavaScript keylogger in your browser and all that uh, kind of stuff. So very nice for awareness demonstration, for example. And um, if you are looking more into teaching how, um, how you can uh, automate um, security tools, you can also use some of the juice drop challenges to, to play around with, for example, with the, with the Zap Spider or with, uh, with, with uh, Burp Suite or with other tools, right? And we have lots of documentation on all these kinds of things. So it's uh, yeah, pretty, pretty well documented, I would say. Um, if, you, if you are a beginner with JuShop, there's also one uh, special mode that, that we recommend. And I can quickly show that. I just have to clean my cookies to be sure that it basically starts Next time I boot it from scratch without any already solved challenges. This is our so-called tutorial mode. So let's wait a second. This is basically a recommended mode, especially if you are trying to, to start working with the juice shop on your own and you have not really a good idea what what's uh, what's uh, what's going on with it so this basically forces you through this tutorial that i just skipped um, before right to actually find the scoreboard so in this case i cannot even do anything else right i'm clicking around but nothing happens so it, i now have to actually go through the tutorial, unless I already know where the scoreboard is. And when I am on the scoreboard of the juice shop now, it looks a little bit different because it will only show me a small list 
of, uh, of hacking challenges here, right? So it's only a couple of challenges and it's especially it's only the ones which come with a built-in tutorial, right? So I cannot change the settings here. Um, and basically I'm, I'm now forced to first solve all these challenges which come with a tutorial. For example, the stomach SS which I just did, right? So if I click this button here, it will, again, it will would take me through the hacking challenge that I just performed. And only when I've completed all these relatively easy challenges, then basically the rest of the scoreboard will be unlocked. And then I can start hacking the juice shop completely on my own if I like. So that's that's a very good way actually to get started with it, right? If you're if you're a newcomer to the to the world of web hacking web hacking, so to say. Yeah. So that's one thing that is quite convenient. And I can, of course I can then start it later again in the normal mode and then I will have my scoreboard completely unlocked again. I think this is really incredible, especially all the vulnerabilities at one place. Uh, you can check uh, how you are progressing. And there are tutorials as well to make you learn about these bugs because that's very important. Rather than you being stuck and looking for cheat sheets, you have the solution here itself, which is telling you how exactly this can happen. Yeah. That's and there's something, something that we actually quite, quite recently added is uh, another layer of uh, of learning. So all this, these challenges you find here on the scoreboard are about hacking, right? So um, some of the challenges have an additional button, the, these angular brackets here. And this is basically our, uh, the, the, these challenges, 26 of the 100, have an associated coding challenge. And this is something that is quite, uh, quite new. And I can maybe quickly show how this works. So it also comes with a tutorial if you want to have some, some help. So this will present you with a, with a code snippet. And the task for you is to actually find the line of code or lines of code which you, which you think might be responsible for this vulnerability. In this case, it's about the scoreboard. So finding the scoreboard. And the question now is, okay, in, in what line of code here the scoreboard is being being exposed, right? So if I if I scroll through this, pretty obvious that there's here some some part where the scoreboard URL is basically mapped, right? So, but if I, for example, if I'm not not sure and I uh, maybe click the wrong line here and I scroll down and submit this, it will tell me that this is not correct. Okay, no problem. I can try another one, which might still be not correct. But then the juice shop already starts giving you a little bit of help. Right, and it it will continue giving you help until the point where it's out of hints, and then it will just bluntly tell you the correct line, right? So you never get completely stuck in this in this part of the exercise. So okay, line one hundred fourteen would have been the correct one because here the scoreboard path is mapped. Ah, I should have known. So if I submit this, I get confetti again, and now the second part of this coding challenge is to try and find the correct fix for the problem, right? And this is shown again here in, a, in this nice um, code diff view. So I can, for example, show only the lines with differences. So the first fix that is recommended or that, that is offered as an option is to just completely remove this whole scoreboard uh, section. The second fix that is offered is just saying, please don't do anything because if the scoreboard is gone, you cannot really use the juice shop anymore. And the third fix that is offered is to basically scramble the name of the path a little bit. Okay, so maybe scrambling is the best option, let's see. And uh, well, this will now tell me that obfuscation is never a good security measure. Okay, thanks. Uh, probably deleting the whole section is then the next best option. Okay, it will now tell me that this would basically break 
the juice shop because then you couldn't track your challenges anymore. So in this exception case, it's basically just don't touch it, just leave it as it is, right? And this is then the correct solution. You get an explanation why this is right. And then you basically have this coding challenge solved as well. And of course, for all the other challenges with cross-site scripting, injection, and other stuff, uh, of course, it's uh, there you really have to find the a vulnerable line of code and you really have to find the best possible fix. And some of these are quite, quite easy or obvious, but sometimes the fixes are very close to each other or very similar. And it's really important then to uh, look at the details of what the best option actually is. So this is basically an, an additional layer that was uh, quite recently added, added to the two shop. So lots of stuff to do actually in this, in this, uh, in this application. Yeah, agree with you. There's so much where we can learn from it. I've just been keep checking about it. Now, I am sure there's so much to do in this app. You need help from other people as well. So how people can actually contribute to this project? Yeah, so if you um, are not here, if you go to the, to the project website and you take a look at the new section there, it already shows uh, our, our roadmap, right? So things we are currently working on. For example, we have one uh, behind the scenes, more technical migration going on for our test cases, which is currently our Google Summer of Code project, which is, by the way, our the fifth time, I think, in a row that we con participate in Google Summer of Code with TrueSwap. Uh, and that always brought really good contributions into the, into the project. Um, we also have some, uh, we would actually like to get our test coverage back up. And the ebook that I just showed is currently uh, hosted in a quite legacy technical uh, format. And we would actually like to migrate that or get help migrating that uh, to a more modern, modern stack. But you can also find here uh, different, different uh, labels for our GitHub issues. So there's ones with help wanted and ones with good first issue of which we currently don't have any. So if you go to the GitHub page of the Juice Shop, you can basically in the in the issues you will see labeled um, issues where we would be really help uh, uh, glad for additional help because it's uh, maybe something that I don't have much uh, knowledge about like JWT tokens. This is totally not my strength, so I would be really glad to get some help on this one, for example, um, and especially during times when, for example, uh, Hacktoberfest happens or before Google Summer of Code begins, we try to also have a lot of um, beginner-friendly uh, issues here. But even if you are just interested in contributing and have no idea yet, um, or you have no issue which, you, which speaks to you and you would like to work on, you can just join our uh, Slack channel and uh, just let us know that you're interested in contributing. And we, I'm sure we find some something. Also, we are, of course, always very happy um, to get new ideas for new challenges. So if you create a new issue, we actually have several templates here. Yeah, ones for bug reports, obviously, but also one for challenge ideas, where we are really happy that if you, if you follow the template a little bit, right, by providing a good description, maybe you even have an idea how difficult it is between one and six stars of difficulty what the possible attack flows might be and stuff like this. So you can contribute either by just providing a nice idea to us and maybe someone else wants to pick it up and implement it, or you actually would like to join the uh, implementation team directly. For um, new contributors, we actually have in the documentation um, quite a bit of stuff as well. So there's an entire chapter on uh, how to contribute to the project which also explains our uh, contribution guidelines, how to use pull requests, what our linting standards are, all that stuff is covered here. And for uh, someone who didn't take a look yet in the code base, we even have a yeah. chapter which explains um, what different layers we have in the application um, with some code snippets. So basically, if you, if you read through this chapter here, the code base 101, and then you uh, fork the project and open it in your in your favorite uh, um, IDE. You should be able to find 
out what's what's going on at least for the most part and if not of course we are always happy to help um, preferably just ask in the in the slack channel we also have a gitter chat uh, or you can also write an email but the preferred way for communication is actually our um, project use sub channel on the OWASP slack because then the whole core team can answer right much easier Absolutely, absolutely. I think OWASP channel is a great place to connect. Anyone, they can connect you via email. And the best part is that they can send a pull request if they want to contribute, it, if they want to help out with something with the project. Exactly. And one very important thing uh, not to forget, when you have your, uh, when you actually submitted a pull request and it gets merged um, and you tell me your post address, I will send you some stickers and some, some other merchandise like postcards, magnets, whatever, whatever fits into the envelope, right? Um, so this is one of our, our main sales pitches for new contributors. First pull request means you get stuff. So very important. Great. Thank you so much. And I hope I'll also get some stickers and some nice uh, uh, magnets for juice shop. <laughs> for doing this video, of course. I'm happy to send you some. No, 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 I'm just kidding. But thank you so much. It's so wonderful to, to see the project growing and contributing to the community. It's very, very important to have such projects. Yeah, and it's uh, even after eight years, it's still fun working on it, to be honest. And it has went through some uh, several uh, technical renovations, right? So we started with Angular 1 and by now we are at Angular version 14, right? So it's, it's really grown. Um, but still, it's still maintainable, which is not, uh, it's, it's not always happening for open source projects, which, have, which are eight years old or, or even older, that they are still actively maintainable. And uh, it's still quite fun to work in the code base. So, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Please, please feel free to, uh, to chime in with either ideas or contributions, whatever you like, or you just use the project if you, if you would like to play with it. Yeah. And uh, if you need any help from our side, please do feel free to reach out to us and uh, I'll be happy to be of any help. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for joining me for the project showcase today. Looking forward to many more such, such updates from you. You're welcome. Happy to be back. Yeah, thank you.